This year, I have decided to start a series of paintings showcasing 12 landmarks of my city, Toulouse. As I paint, I invite you to discover the different monuments and streets of this southwestern French city. In today's episode, we are going to discover the Hotel de César. Hello, my name is Iris. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I brought you along to visit the main square of Toulouse, the capital. This month, you will discover a true jewel of Toulouse architecture, the Assisa Hotel. Toulouse boasts more than 50 hotels particuliers, which are private mansions, built for the city's nobles and aristocrats during the 16th and 17th centuries. Among the finest is the Hotel de César, built according to the plans of Nicolas Bachelier, the greatest Toulouse architect of the Renaissance, then completed in 1562 by his son, Dominique Bachelier. This building is a bit hidden and one could pass in front of it and not even realize that behind the imposing portal lies a beautiful piece of architecture. Luckily, the doors of the portal are wide open and anyone can enter in the inner courtyard to at least catch a glimpse of the magnificent Renaissance construction. Taking pictures of this beautiful building for my painting was not an easy task. Although gorgeous, the courtyard is not very big, so I was backed up against the wall to take the picture I ended up using as a reference. As a nod to my last painting, I decided to include the arch of the entry and the lamp. At the time I went, it was already lit, although night had not fallen yet. I decided I wanted to keep it that way. However, the overall lighting in my picture was very flat, so I invented an exaggerated lighting to give more interest to my composition. Renovated in 1993, the facades of the courtyard elegantly display the full expression of classical architecture with the superposition of the three orders on each of the floors Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. If the courtyard is made of bricks, the decoration is made of stone creating an aesthetic effect. The Hotel Assisa was built by Pierre Assisa who made his enormous fortune by buying and selling a plant that was used to make a blue dye. At that time, the King of France had decided to wear blue, to set himself apart from all other royals who wore purple. This led to a fruitful commerce of blue dye which made some merchants very rich. But none were richer than Pierre et César. The blue dye that made Pierre Assisa rich came from a plant called pastel, or woad in English, which was discovered in the countryside around Toulouse. The Hotel d'Assisa houses the Bemberg Foundation Museum and its art collections, notably paintings from the 15th to the beginning of the 20th century. In 1994, George Spamberg, a wealthy Argentinian art lover, lent the art collection he had gathered to the municipality for 99 years in order to make it accessible to the public. This collection includes around 1,400 works, including 390 paintings, 150 bronzes, old books and a very important collection of furniture and art objects. It reflects Mr. Bamberg's eclectic taste, revealing a strong presence of paintings from the Renaissance as well as the modern French school, including a very rich Impressionist collection and a very important group of works by Pierre Bonnard. 
Among the artists exhibited, we find Cranach the Elder, Veronese, Claude Monet, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Edgar Degas, Paul Gauguin, Paul Cézanne, Henri Matisse, Pablo Picasso, etc., etc. The entry to the Bamberg Foundation is not free. You have to pay around 11 euros to be able to see the collection. When painting this piece, I started with the sky using cerulean blue chromium. I just bought this color thinking it might not graduate like the manganese color did in my last painting. I was wrong. It did granulate as well. Um, I ended up reinforcing the color with ultramarine blue, which helped homogenize the overall color and lower the granulation effect. When painting the building, I started first with the local color of all the parts that are made of bricks. I used Potter's Pink and Rose Matter Genuine. After waiting for the first layer of local color to dry, I then proceeded to paint the overall color of the building according to the lighting I decided to implement. For all the areas, I applied Kinacridon Gold. For the shadow areas, I painted a layer of Schmincke Violet. These layers were painted in wet-on-wet -wet technique to ensure a homogeneous layer. I had to use several layers in order to build contrast. While doing so, I did lose some of the local colors I had applied in my first layer, so I went back reinforcing old parts to gain legibility. Just like in my other two paintings of the series, I made the arch in the foreground very dark using indigo and paints grey. Even though you cannot see it in the footage, I finished with color pencils to reinforce some details, especially on the building itself. This painting came out way better than the previous one because the portrait composition works well when there is a tower. I hope you have enjoyed this new painting and that I have given you a taste of discovery with this new landmark. Next month, we will be walking along the main river of Toulouse, the Garonne, to see some of the most popular places of the city. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me and if you did, let me know by liking this video. And if you want to see more of my creations, 
subscribe. Have a nice day, night, whatever the time you're watching this, if you're watching it until the end. Thank you for watching.